So, uh, yeah, hey, um, happy Memorial Day weekend, by the way. Um, let me just say this. I, I, I haven't always done this very well, but recently I have, and that is um, Memorial Day is not just a long weekend. Uh, Memorial Day is something to, to process and to sit in and think about because we, listen, we live free lives, and we get to do that, and it's a gift from God but it is through um, folks who died for us and died for our country. Um, so let's remember that. Let's be uh, let's let's be prayerful of that this, uh, today and tomorrow when you're eating your hamburgers tomorrow uh, at the cookout you didn't invite me to. Um, just just remember that. So let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are that you love us, and um, Father, thank you for the thing that we that we take for granted, and that is our freedom. Thank you for the folks, Lord, that um, had the courage and the selflessness, Lord, to, uh, to fight for that freedom. God, I pray that we would have them in our hearts this weekend. Thank you for that picture of the gospel, Lord, that you laid down your life for us, that we might have so much, Lord, especially access to you. Be with us, Lord, this morning as we uh, dive a little bit into your word, Father, speak through through this message, Father, into the hearts of our folks. You know where they're at. You know what they need to hear. Draw us closer to you this morning. It's your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. So I used to play basketball on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, me and some of the pastoral type guys. You know, this is years and years ago. A lot of pastors who can take Tuesdays off. You know, we can do that when you're... Anyway, not that I do that. I don't do that now, of course. But um, but we would get together. And at first, there's only like eight of us, so we'd play four on four. And I, mean, I couldn't do that now if I had to. Four on four. I got who else? I got I don't play defense. So you know how am I gonna how am I gonna do that? Well, it started building. More people started coming. Like a bunch of guys, like business guys, would come, and they they take off part of the Tuesday and come play with us. And it was a lot of fun. And it was heated. Man, do you think? I mean, you think a bunch of pastors is probably not going to be that heated. Uh, we're competitive, and uh, so, but it was fun, and it was a great camaraderie. Some we made some great friends, and uh, it was really was a great opportunity for some of these guys who come who didn't know the Lord, who would come and play, and we'd build real relationship with them, and and that was that was really neat. Um, there's one guy in particular named Brent, and Brent was a, a businessman in Greensboro, uh, very wealthy, very successful. Um, and, uh, he was not at the time a believer. And so he would come and he, he was a little more crude than some of us were with his language and that kind of thing. And that was okay. We, we loved him. And, uh, uh, but he, he, he had this and, and, you know, he was a su- successful guy. So he had this way about him. Um, he was, he was kind of domineering and kind of, uh, you know, like he had things together and he was, it could be gruff at times and, uh, kind of mouthy and that kind of thing, and uh, but he um, one one day in particular after we played, I went into the locker room uh, of the gym, and he was sitting on the floor with one of the pastors, and one of the pastors was holding his hand, and he was praying for him, but um, but Brent was just weeping, weeping, just uncontrollable tears, and I didn't know what was going on at the time, and <clears throat> so the next. The next week, I asked the guy who was praying with him what had happened, and he said that Brent's daughter was really, really sick, and it was life-threatening, and um, and I don't remember what the sickness was, but it was, so he was, he was, uh, so then, so what happened was he kept coming, and we would, um, more and more guys would, would after the, after we played, would, you know, pray, pray for him, pray for his daughter, and lay hands on him, and that kind of thing, and um, it was interesting to watch him. Because here he was, he was this very desperate man, and, and imagine his his desperate state. His daughter's sick, and uh, when you have children, your children, in many ways, become your world. Uh, your life is altered because of this child, and um, and and all he wanted, all he wanted, was his girl to be well again. If if um, if she could be well again, then um, then life could go on and be good. And so um, 
after uh, several months, she actually was healed, and um, and he gave his life to Christ, and um, he became a Jesus follower. And it was interesting to see this guy because I don't know what he believed about Jesus. I know he wasn't a Jesus follower, but he he at that in that in that time of desperation he was he was weeping at the feet of the father basically because he was a, he was broken he was broken because his daughter was sick he was a broken man and nothing that he could do could change that so he laid desperately at the feet of the father and i just recently saw him at a party on well back in january i saw him at a party and his whole world is different he's He's a man that follows Jesus, that walks with him every day, and um, and it was fun to catch up, and uh, and it was fun to see a difference in his spirit. He wasn't the same guy that he was when he first started playing ball with us. See, his desperation caused him to exert or you know give a, a picture of faith the way we think faith works, and. Um, and so, uh, uh, but uh, what, but the story that we see here, like when I tell that story, you probably think, you probably know of something like this that's happened in your life or you've heard it on television or something, and you go, yeah, that's powerful. It's a powerful picture of faith, what God can do uh, when we lay our desperation before him. <coughs> and so, um, uh, but doesn't... As we talk about faith, faith, faith is a hard one. You know, we've been talking about this. We've been in a faith series over the past few weeks. And I don't know about you, but faith is a struggle for me. Faith, to me, often, um, faith can be day-to-day, can it? Uh, aren't we, don't we have more faith some days than we do others? Is that, is that not true? Now, what bugs us about that is we don't realize everybody else feels the same way. Like, we think we're the faithless ones because our faith changes day-to-day. But that's true for everybody. And uh, not that there aren't people who are more faithful than others, but um, but, but it really does change day to day. And I know that struggle. Um, you know, uh, do do I have enough faith? Is, do I have the right idea of faith? Um, is my faith strong enough to get me through this or get me through that? And then what? what and then uh, what comes out of our faith um, is what we have, what we receive. But I'm gonna I want to challenge us a little bit this morning. I, I hope what we can do, and I hope this is hope this is happening throughout the weeks through the di- different Sundays. I hope that we can um, change a little, change what we believe about faith. Faith isn't having enough faith. Um, faith comes out of a relationship that you have with Jesus, and so you need to be connected to Jesus. Like like faith isn't just something you decide to have someday. Well, I'm gonna have more faith today. Because Jesus says I'm supposed to. That would be, I mean, you know, again, we're, that's, not, that's not the picture. Because then, who, we, who do we have faith in? You. <laughs> I just gotta, I gotta put it in fifth gear. I can put my faith in fifth gear. Really? You, can you just, you mean to tell me that you can just slide faith in the fifth, group, fifth gear? Yep, you can do that? I can't. I can't do it. If I tell you that y'all, y'all, y'all listen, y'all need to have more faith, does that feel good to you at all? Well, hey, sister, I know you're struggling. Just have more faith. Brother, I know you're sick and you're not feeling good. Have more faith. How does that feel? Does that feel good? No, it doesn't feel good. But we hear it a lot, don't we? Especially in our little Christian circles. Don't we hear that a lot? What if I just said to Brent, I ain't gonna pray for you. I'm just gonna have you, I want you, want you to have more faith. Your daughter will be fine. Mm-mm. I'm gonna say something profound. <laughs> the essence of faith is knowing Jesus. The essence of faith is knowing Jesus. And knowing Jesus is a journey. Okay? We're going to be in a passage I love. Mark chapter 5, we're starting in verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet 
He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. So Jesus has just left a place that really people didn't want him there. They wanted to get rid of him. And he, he, um, what he had done was, and I'm just nutshelling it, he had uh, put some spirits in a, in a bunch of pigs, their livestock, you know, the, 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 the pigs they depended on for finances. And um, he had them run into the, well, he didn't have them. I mean, they, they just decided to run into the water because they were crazy now. Uh, with spirits all in them, and they drowned. So they're like, Jesus, leave. <laughs> Get out. Go away. And so he, go, he goes back to where he's a little more popular. There's a crowd waiting for him. And, uh, and, and, and crowds love Jesus. They love to hear the things he said. They love the, they love the things he did. They love the miracles. Um, uh, they, they love the fact that he would heal. And Jairus, of all people, run up to him. Now, Jairus, this isn't the kind of guy that normally runs up to Jesus and falls at his feet. Jairus is a leader of the synagogue. He's not a Pharisee, but he's close. He, um, he, he runs the synagogue. And so he's a man of wealth. He's a man of uh, prestige. And uh, these guys usually come and try to quiz Jesus. These guys are the ones that are trying to trap Jesus. So this is different. This guy's coming to him, and he is throwing himself at the feet of Jesus. And you can imagine why he would do that. His daughter is dying. His daughter is very sick. His world is about to change. Or his world is... And, and so he, he, um, he throws himself down. Um, he longs for his daughter to be well. Because if his daughter is well, then things are good again. And, and, and he doesn't... All he wants more than anything else in the whole world is for his daughter to be healed. That's how Brent felt when he was weeping in the locker room. If only my daughter could be well. Now, Jairus was probably in a position also, if you think about it, um, where his status has gotten him where he is today. And, but this is something he can't tr- control. This is something he can do nothing about. He can't heal his daughter. If we stop and think about it long enough, you feel for Jairus. Like you're, you're reading this, you haven't read the, the entire thing, and you're sitting there going, man, I, even just for Jairus' sake and his wife, let's pray that his daughter lives. The love of a child changes everything. Those of you who have kids, you know what I'm talking about. It changes everything. It changes, your, it changes your perspective. And those of you who don't have kids, um, you, you can imagine, well, Sarah, come on now. Anyway, we, 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 we love our children. I remember when Max was born, my first. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how I felt. I couldn't believe how full my heart was. I'd never felt anything like that before. I mean, with Cindy, it was different. Cindy was so wonderful and beautiful and all those other things. I, was, I fell in love with her for who she was, you know, her, her, her qualities. I didn't know what Max's qualities were, except that he was, he was ours. And um, I adored him. Still do. It never, it never changes. I mean, honestly, if that big six-foot lug, 19 years old, about to go to Old Miss... <coughs> If he wanted to crawl up on my lap today and let me hold him and kiss him and just be in my arms, I'd do it. But he won't, he won't do that. <laughs> None of my kids will do that. They won't let me do that. I wish they would, but they won't. Sam might sometime, but anyway. <laughs> Jesus, just come make my world okay again is what Jairus is asking for. Is he desperate or full of faith? What do you think? He's desperate. He's desperate. We're going to find out. This story isn't so much about the daughter. See, Jesus is engaging us on our journey of faith. 
And that's what Jairus is on. He's on, he's on a journey of faith. I want you to look at this verse. It's only, what, five words. It's very important. Mark 5, 24. So Jesus went with him. That's very important. So Jesus went with him. You're going to see something about Jesus in that verse. I want you to take this in. I want you to understand something. Jesus could have snapped his fingers and healed her right then, right there. But he didn't. He went with him. You hear that? What about the character of Jesus would make him do that? Why would, why would Jesus, instead of just making everything okay, why did he go with him? Because Jesus wanted him to journey with him. Faith isn't about fixing the problem. Faith is about the journey. It's about knowing who Jesus is. The invitation was for Jairus to walk with Jesus, know the character of Jesus, to journey with him. And that is our invitation is to walk with Christ. That's very, very important. Jesus doesn't hesitate either. He says, let's go. Let's do this. See, here's the thing we need to understand. It's in our nature for a significant touch from Christ in our most desperate situations. Jesus join us, joins us in this place of desperation, in this place of need, that he be with us, that he walk with us, that he reveal himself to us. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had subject of bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had yet Instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. I like, I like this story. I like this woman. I've thought a lot about her uh, through time, done a lot of Bible studies and that kind of thing. I mean, she's in a, she's in a mess. I mean, think about this. She has this bleeding. They, uh, most scholars believe it's some sort of menstrual type thing. Um, it's, uh, and it's been happening for 12 years. I say a long time. 12 years is a long time uh, to go through this kind of suffering. And the word suffered here means great pain. It means she's in a lot of pain. So it's not just bleeding, but it's also a lot of pain. And uh, she's tried to do, she's done all the things that she could do to make herself well. And how frustrating is that? When you try and try and try, you see doctor after doctor after doctor, and nothing works. I have a student named Carl. Just recently, he went through this deal. I was keeping up with it on Facebook. His wife kept um, putting things out there. He had in internal bleeding, and they didn't know what it was. They didn't know what the problem was. And they went through. They, they try all these different things, and some days he'd feel better, and then he'd get worse again. And you know, imagine, he'd say, oh, I feel good today. Maybe think maybe we're heading in the right direction. But then the next day or two days later, he starts feeling bad again. They have to take him back to the to the hospital in Winston Salem. I mean, he was he was in bad shape. He's doing great now. They figured it out. But it was very frustrating for them. And so imagine this woman. She might think at this point there's no hope. I mean, 12 years. And, and, uh, and here's the other thing. The other thing is this. She is unclean because of her bleeding. And if she's unclean, that means there's not just physical, he, uh, physical pain. There's also this uh, societal pain or this pain. I mean, she, imagine the depression because she's considered unclean. She doesn't get to uh, be with her friends. She doesn't get to uh, go to uh, the temple. She doesn't get to uh, go to the go to parties. She is uh, really an, an outcast. Imagine the loneliness that she feels. All she wants is to be well. If she's well again, then everything is right. So she sees Jesus. And she knows something about Jesus. We don't really know what she knows exactly. We don't know if she's seen him heal somebody or she's heard him teaching, whatever. But she has this idea that if she just touches the hem of his robe, then she'll be healed. 
So she sees him, and she sees he's in a, he's in a crowd. Now, remember, now Jesus is on a mission, right? He's on a mission. He's going to he's going to uh, uh, heal this little girl, and and so, uh, but she wants her world to change too, and so she's willing to take a risk. And the risk is this: I'm going to get in that crowd, and I'm going to go to touch Jesus, the hem of his robe. I mean, that's real desperation on her part because she's not even supposed to be around the crowd, but she wants to be healed, and she thinks she can be. And she touches his hem. She's unclean. This is risky. And she doesn't want to be exposed. And that she's going to do it. And, and I think we can all relate to that in a sense because um, uh, we, we have wanted to touch Jesus uh, some, at some time. And I uh, had, a, had a, a friend in college named Joan who she, for years, the first part of an of a entire year, she would come to our worship service, our university worship service, and she would always come in late and leave early. And she'd sit in the back, and she didn't engage anybody. She was very awkward, and she didn't have any friends, and she didn't want, she didn't want to engage anybody, uh, but she wanted to hear the gospel. She, there was something about this Jesus that she heard about every week that just touched her, and she knew that she needed it. But she was afraid to uh, intermingle. She was afraid to let anybody else know. She was afraid to have contact with other people. But she knew there was something about Jesus. There was something about him. And she was trying to figure out what it was. And, and the same with this woman. If I just can get close enough, I don't want anybody to notice. I just want to touch the hem. And if I'm healed, that's great. There's a faith there. There's a faith. We're going to talk about that in a second. We don't know where the faith is coming from, necessarily. Mark 5, 29 says, Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. Immediately she was healed. And that's all she seemed to want, right? All she wants is to be healed. Boom, she's healed. She knew she was healed. I I guess she she knew. She could feel that she was healed. And you know what? That's enough, honestly. I mean, if that was the story, hey, my friend here, she's got bleeding and she wants to touch, she touches Jesus in and now, and now, now she's healed. And that could be the end. I mean, isn't that how faith works? I want to be healed and so I'm healed and now it's good. That's not the way, that's not really how faith works though. Um, Jesus delivered, he does, he did. Um, and and that's what, isn't that what we're taught? Isn't that what we're taught kind of about faith often? You got a need, give it to Jesus, he'll take care of it. You got it, it's good. And that would, could be the end of the story. The problem is the story's not complete. Because that's not what faith is. That isn't what faith is. Our faith stories are incomplete without a deeper knowledge of the character of God. It's not about the act, it's about the relationship. At once Jesus realized that power had gone from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people around you, uh, crowding against you, said his disciples' answer. And you can ask who touched me. See, the story's not over. For many of us, it would be. If, if I had a robe and had powers in it that could heal people, and I knew somebody had touched the hem of the robe and they were healed, I'd be good. That's great. I got, one, I got a little girl to save because I am not Jesus. But it wasn't enough for Jesus. Who touched me? And they're like, and you know, you, again, disciples are, 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 are wacky, but I mean, you got to agree with them on this. So a lot of people gather around him. They're like, come on, dude. <laughs> You're being touched all over the place. What, what, what do you mean? But Jesus knew he had been touched in a significant way. He knew that he had been, he had been touched in a life-transforming way. And he was not done with her. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Jesus had stopped in this incredibly important journey. He stopped. Imagine what Jairus is feeling. Jairus is like, whoa, wait a minute, let's go. No, you can't stop. I got a sick daughter, let's go. Somebody tell us, you big deal, let's go. And the woman is caught. She's revealed, she's exposed. 
And so she falls at her feet, not knowing what the circumstances or what the consequences were going to be next. And it could have been the audacity of her, this unclean woman, to be in the crowd, to, to touch the robe of the healer. How dare she stop him when he's on this important journey to heal, of all people, the daughter of the ruler of the synagogue. And in the middle of all these folks, she wants to get a piece of his greatness. You see, she's small. She's insignificant. She's unworthy. And so she falls at the feet of Jesus. Why couldn't he just let her go? Why could, I'm done. I'm good. I'm healed. I can go back to the temple. I can go to parties with my friends. I can go to the movie theater. They didn't have movies then, by the way. I don't know if y'all knew that. That would have been cool. This is not about her healing. The story is not about her healing. This is about her encounter with Jesus. She gets to have a face-to-face -face with her healer because he invited her to. See, faith is not about the healing. Faith is about the journey. Faith is about the relationship. You see, he calls her. He stops, and he, he engages in her because that's what Jesus does. He calls her daughter. That's important. You know, that's the most important thing that she could be called, the daughter of the Holy One. We're a lot of things. And some of them aren't so great. We could probably do it, name a list of things that we are, can't we? All of us can. Live, you know, I'm selfish. <laughs> I, I, I overeat. <laughs> I, um, I can be stupid sometimes. You know, da, 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 I can, I'm lonely. Whatever, whatever it is, you could be that. You could be that. You could be the disease. You could be the, the problem, the issue. But that is not what you are. That is not who you are. You are the sons and daughters of the beloved one. You're the beloved one of Jesus Christ. You're the sons and daughters of the king. That's what you are more than anything else, and he reveals that to her. Daughter. And then he offers her the thing that she's never had, and that is peace. The healing could have been enough for her. But what she didn't know was that she was invited to be in a relationship with, her, with, the, with the man who was going to lay his life down for her on a cross because he loves her so much. Do you believe that about you? that he adores you, that you are sons and daughters. Does that matter? Do you know it well enough that it matters, that it changes the way you think, that it changes the way you do life? Here's the thing. This may or not be profound. I don't know. I think it's important, though. Faith is not simply believing in what God can do but knowing who he is. So the important part of the journey is a relational part where you come to know him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of the Jairus synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? Ever hearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Now this is devastating for Jairus. His, he went from hope to despair. His world has been altered. It's been destroyed in many ways. I can't even imagine what it would be like. I can't imagine somebody coming and telling me that my daughter had died. My life would not be the same again. I'm sorry, it just wouldn't be. But Jesus looks at him and he offers hope again. He calls him to believe. And believing means that you believe in not just what he can do, but who he is. 
that you're willing, believing is believing with all your heart. It's not just a kind of a belief. Well, maybe. Believing is when you're willing to lay everything else down and wrap your arms around Jesus because he's all you need. That's, that's real belief. And, and again, that's, that's, that's the journey. You might be sitting there going, well, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> you're on the road, though. You're on the journey. Stick with him. You see, here, and here's the other thing. Isn't it cool that he, go, that he invites Jairus to go with him? But, and, then, and then Jairus got to see him heal the woman. And not only did he get to see him heal the woman, he got to see him engage the woman. He got to heal, hear him call her daughter. There's more to this man than it meets the eye. We get to have a curtain open once in a while. We get to see inside of who Jesus really is, who he really is, who his character is, that he's compassionate, that he's empathetic, that he loves purely and deeply, that he loves us in a way that we can hardly even talk about because we don't really experience day-to-day with other people. As our faith journey takes us sometimes into darker periods, which is where Jairus is, God's continued pursuit of us will offer supernatural comfort and trust. Comfort and trust in Christ does not come with a flip of a switch. It comes in knowing him. It comes in the relationship. It comes in the journey. He did not, know, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but is asleep. But they laughed at him. So now Jesus is like, okay, so let's go, let's go heal this girl. Let's go heal her. They walk into this place where there's weeping and, and wailing and uh, real mourning. And because uh, and, 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 that's our relationship with death. You know, our, our perspective is so small and it's so limited to this earth often that we don't think about what could be. We don't think about the eternal often enough. Um, and uh, but I remember, I remember like the, my first real experience of death was uh, my grandmother on my dad's side dying, and she died all of a sudden, and I uh, wasn't quite prepared for that. And uh, several days passed before the funeral, and I went to the funeral home, the visitation, and when I saw her, all of a sudden it was just this wave of, of despair hit me because I thought I'll never get to... Um, uh, hug her again. I'll never get to have conversations with her and laugh with her again. And it was, whew, it was heavy. And I never felt anything like that before. And I start just weeping in ways I've never weeped before. I mean, I thought I was going to fall down. That's how bad I was crying. And and um, I had this, I had this, I had this great big aunt. And uh, she came up and she she was strong too. And she pulled me up and pulled me into her. And I just. I mean, my tears just wet that poor woman's dress. So imagine Jesus walking into that, a little girl, a little girl. And Jesus says, she's not dead. He's calling them to, he's calling them to faith. He's calling them to trust. What's going on right now is temporary. Do you know what if she had died? Even if she had died, it still would have been temporary. It still would have been temporary. Because there's, there's this thing called eternity with Christ. But it's hard for us to get our arms around that. But what's going to happen here is that he's going to touch this girl. And the touch of Christ is perfect and eternal. The touch of Christ is perfect and eternal. He took her by the hand. He said to her, Talitha Karum. means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told him to give her something to eat. He didn't do anything. Abracadabra, he just took her by the hand. Took her by the hand. And he basically, and he said, little girl, get up. He is not waving anything. He's not calling down God from the heavens to fill up the room. He just goes to her, takes her by the hand, touches her, and says, get on up. And immediately she gets up and is completely healed. 
And then he says, now get her something to eat. Isn't that funny? Because what do we do every day? We eat. When we're sick, we go, oh, I don't want anything to eat. But she's so healed. She's so perfectly healed. She now has an appetite. And Jesus goes, hey, get her something to eat. Because she's good. And she's hungry. Now that's a healing. That's full healing. I'm going to close by saying this. Faith is trusting through knowing and believing that God is everything that he says he is and will do all the things that he says he will. But you don't have anything in you that you can just turn on to believe that. It, it begins with a journey, and it continues in a journey with him because the more you know him, the more you're going to trust him, the more you're going to believe in him, the more you're going to love him because he's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit on that journey. And you're going, to be, you're, going to be, you're going to be like, I am a son of Christ. I am a daughter of Christ. And you're going to know who he is. And you're going to understand his love. He's going to give you a perspective that's beyond what you're experiencing here on this earth. Faith is not a fad. Faith is not a last resort, though we treat it like it is often. It's not something we turn on when we need it. But in many places, it's what we hear. In many circles, it's what we hear. Well, I'm just going to turn on the faith. It is nurtured in a relationship developed on your journey with Christ. Where are you in that journey? And if you're not in a good place, it's okay. Because <laughs> a lot of people aren't. Is it inconsistent? That's okay. Because with the love most of us, it is. But together, as we walk along together with Jesus, he will, he will change that. We'll come to know who he is. Believe in him more. Trust him more. And then faith will just be second nature. But only in Christ. Only in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are all the things you say you are and you'll do all the things you say you'll do. Father, help us to believe that and trust that. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters and for me and that we would be on this journey with you, Father. And, um, and God, thank you that you want to be on it, even though we don't, may not understand why you want us to be with you, but you do. Like you wanted Jairus to know you, like you wanted uh, this bleeding woman to know you, that you healed. Father, um, God, uh, we pray that, that we would, uh, that all of us would uh, be on that journey and that we, we would encourage each other on that journey, Father. Um, places we're weak, places we're strong. And Father, that every day we be at your feet, not just when we are desperate. For those who don't know you, Lord, we pray that they come know you today. That today they would say, yeah, that's the God I want to follow. That's the Jesus I want to I want to know. And they would just lay all their other stuff, Lord, at your feet and receive you. And those of us who've walked with you for a while, Father, I pray that we trust you more. Um, it would be a daily thing. Thank you, Father, that you invite us. It's your something we pray. Amen.